Hey guys, my name is Hiroko Murakami. I'm here with Nova Edge Academics, and today we're continuing with topic B2, part three of thermal energy. All right, so first we're gonna start off with luminosity. And just, just to kind of recap, we've talked about power, right? Power of radiation. Specifically, that power is expressed as this, right? And this can be used for like sun, for light, like lamp, right? All of this stuff. Luminosity is the same thing as power. It's expressed in the same equation, but we just use it for the context of celestial objects like stars and planets and stuff because those guys emit a lot of power. Okay, we call that luminosity rather than power. Okay, we can also express luminosity in comparison to our sun. Okay, our sun gives off 3.8 times 10 power of 26 watts. You know, if you put in the temperature of the sun, surface area of the sun, in the city of the sun, you can calculate the power of the sun, right? Um, so we can actually put it into, in terms of the context of that. So let's say, you know, Earth emits one-tenth of the sun's luminosity. So luminosity of Earth is one-tenth of this guy. Like, it's just easier. Uh, we don't need to write out the whole thing. It's just what it means, okay? We also have something called apparent brightness. And apparent brightness is the same thing as intensity. And remember that intensity is power over area, okay? So one thing I want to note is that the sun, we know it emits 3.8 times 10 to the power of 26 watts. But as Earth, we don't get 3.8 times 10 to the power of 26 watts. It's a tremendous amount, and we would essentially burn as a planet if we did, okay? We receive typically around like 2,000 watts close to that uh, and then you know take into account like the clouds and everything what we got get on the surface of the earth is much much less than that about 340 watts okay so how did we go from 10 to the power of 26 watt to 300 watts well we have to account for the distance from the sun to the earth right so let's say I have the sun to the earth is very far away Right, so even though it emits at even though it emits at at like 10 to the power of 26 watt scale, we only get 300 watt at this point because you're essentially doing that to every direction possible. And the mathematical expression to express, you know, how much power you get at a certain distance is the intensity. So d here is the distance. Okay, and we call it intensity. Right. Now the intensity, same thing for luminosity in terms of luminosity is called apparent brightness. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about something called the standard candle. Okay. So the question becomes, how do we measure luminosity or distance? When I look at the sun, okay, how am I supposed to know the temperature of the sun? Right? How am I supposed to know how far away the sun is? Right? Without these things, I can't calculate the luminosity or the distance. So how do we do it, right? So first, let me answer the question of distance. How do we get the distance? We use something called the parallax effect, okay? Uh, it becomes important, so just listen up. The parallax effect essentially is, well, I'm trying to figure out the distance to a certain place, right? So when you're traveling in a car, right? Well, the foreground, these small hills, they pass by really fast really really fast because they're really close right but the mountain at the background doesn't really move or it moves by a little bit over time right so there's a difference between the speed of these guys traveling versus these guys which move slower this difference we can actually use and that's because it's relative to its distance right so using this effect i can actually calculate how far away a mountain is or a small hill is something like that right and I can use the same thing for, let's say, clouds. I can use the same thing for nearby stars. So for nearby stars, I can calculate the distance. How about luminosity? Well, if I know the distance, okay, I have two variables, luminosity and apparent brightness. Remember that luminosity is a function of this, right? So without knowing the temperature or emissivity, I can't get the luminosity but I can actually do it through apparent brightness. And apparent brightness is just the intensity of the, the light that we receive on Earth. We can calculate that, right? We, we can get an instrument to measure that quite easily, right? 
So we can actually get this guy and this guy, so we can get the luminosity as well. And from that luminosity, we can also estimate the temperature as well, right? So it's really cool, right, how we do things, okay? So why am I talking about this, and what is this standard candle? Okay, well, well, the question becomes, what if we're not talking about nearby stars? What if it's like in light years away, right? If it's so far away, then these two, let's say like we have stars like this, right? If it's so far away, no matter how far the car goes, they don't move. They don't move at all. So how can I get it as a function of this movement? We can't. We can't measure the distance using the parallax effect. So we always had a struggle to find, you know, the luminosity or the distance of planets and stars far, far away. We don't know how to calculate it. So how do we do it? Well, a scientist called Henriette Le Leavitt discovered that you can use something called the Cepheid variables to do this. Okay, And let me explain. Well, Cepheid variables are stars that pulsate with a cyclic pattern. Okay, So maybe if I have a Cepheid variable that's close by, it pulsates once a day, one of them. Okay, another one pulsates once a week. Okay, and she found out that essentially this period, how often it pulsates, there's a correlation with its luminosity. And she did this with nearby stars where you can calculate both the distance and the luminosity, like I explained, right? So she found this correlation out. Well, this has to be true for stars that are far, far ahead, right? And so for these stars that are very far ahead that you can't get the distance of, I can actually find the luminosity by just observing how often it pulsates. And if I'm able to get the luminosity of how far it pulsates, right? And if I can measure the apparent brightness that we receive on Earth, I can get the distance. And so this is really insane. We can now me measure the distance to far, far away galaxies and also their luminosity. And using that, we can calculate also the nearby stars and approximate the distance and luminosity of those as well, okay? Uh, you need to be able to briefly explain this if it comes up in paper two, okay? And last but not least, I wanna just talk about the astrophysical scale of everything, okay? This is not part of the curriculum, so you don't need to memorize these, okay? I'm just doing this because I am hoping to make physics interesting for you and you get interested in it and to be able to more, like be more attentive and learning, like excited to learn, right? So just to give it a context, we are in our solar system and in our solar system, we have one sun, one star. We're orbiting around the star, right? And there are maybe like a dozen planets around the sun, right? Our solar system, right? Well. Turns out there is 3,916 solar systems in our galaxy, okay, in our galaxy. So each of these dots that you see are their own solar system. So in the solar system they have, they might have multiple stars and they'll have a lot of planets and each planet might have a moon orbiting around it, right? Crazy scale, right? 3,916 of them, okay, in our galaxy. Wow, right? Well, it turns out there is 100 to 200 billion planets in our Milky Way. So all of these solar systems, they have a ton of planets. If we count them all, it's about 100 to 200 billion planets in our Milky Way. Okay? And then there's 200 to billion to 2 trillion galaxies in our universe. Like this whole thing, there's 200 billion to trillion of them, which comes out to about 3.2 times 10 to the power of 23 planets in the universe. This is just crazy scale, right? Which is probably the reason why I believe, you know, personally that there might be an extraterrestrial beings out there somewhere where we can't even see, we can't, we'll never find out because it's just so far, far away. Okay, another thing is, well, the closest uh, solar system, another solar system, it's called the Alpha Centauri from our solar system, okay? Our neighbor, essentially. It's called the Alpha Centauri, okay? And Alpha Centauri has, you know, two suns in them and uh, dot, like plenty of, plenty of planets, okay? And it is 4.2 to 4.4 light years away. What is this light years metric? Well, 
Speed of light is 300 million meters per second, which comes out to one light year of 9.46 trillion kilometers. Okay, multiply by that by four, it's about 40 trillion kilometers away. Crazy, right? Trillion kilometers away. It's so far. And well, I kind of want to give this context as a light years. It's really wonderful in the sense that whatever happens in Alpha Centauri today, the light is traveling to our sun and it's going to get to us in 4.2 years. So until 4.2 years later, where the image is delivered to us, we actually don't know what's going on in Alpha Centauri right now. We only know what's happening 4.2 years before. So if Alpha Centauri, for example, explodes today, collapses, explodes today, a huge explosion, right? We're only going to find out in 4.2 years. That's really crazy, right? And I just wanted to put this to end this video. Okay, so continue. Uh, thank you for watching the video. Uh, if you're interested, watch our fourth part of B1, Thermal Energy. And I'll hope to see you there. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. If you find these really useful, then consider giving us a like and subscribing to our channel. For questions, leave them down below in the comment and we'll try to get back to you. For more academic resources, visit our website at novaedgeacademics.com. We offer one-on-one -on -one tutoring service as well as college admission strategy. Uh, let us know what you'd like us to cover next and we'll see you in the next video.